why is he like so why is he hot why is he so hot hi guys welcome back to my channel today's video is going to be my reading wrap up for the month of march i think i read 16 books in the month of march i counted on goodreads and it said 16 but i also sometimes don't log every single book so i will clarify right here I think I read 16 books in the month of March. If you watch my TBR video for March, then you know that I had eight books of required reading this past month. That really sounds like school and like I'm forcing myself to read, but I promise that's not the case. I've just, as we know, been really trying to be serious about getting through my physical TBR this year. So I picked eight books in that video that were off of the shelf that I had to read. I DNF'd one of them, but I'm gonna consider that because we'll discuss that book that I DNF'd in a bit. And then If We Were Villains was one of the books that was required reading. I finished that at the beginning of April. I wasn't able to finish that before March was up, so I'm actually not going to be including that book in today's video, but you will see that one in my April reading wrap-up. Don't worry, it was read. This month wasn't a bad reading month, but it wasn't the best reading month ever. I think the highest rated book was a four and a half star, and it was just one book. There was a lot of three star reads, a lot of three and a half, a few four star reads, no five star reads. It was just an all right reading month. Lots of fun books, but nothing absolutely out of this world, in my opinion. Like always, I'm gonna start with my physical books and then after I go through these, we will jump into the books that I read on my Kindle. I'm also not going in any particular order. First up we have Strung Along by Hannah Cohen. I think I gave this book three and a half stars, maybe 3.25 stars. I thought it was so much fun. The last 50 pages did lose me a little bit. Just a little bit, but not enough for me to like not recommend the book. I liked it enough. I giggled throughout all of it. This is a small town cowboy romance. The MMC Brody Steele is a famous country musician and he ends up going back to his small town to like work on his ranch with his grandparents. He needed a little break. I think he was having a voice issue and while he's there that's where he meets the FMC and it's not enemies to lovers from the start. It's dislike to lovers. Like they just do not hit it off in a good way. They meet in a bar. They are bickering from the start. They just very much dislike each other. But while this is happening they're also anonymously chatting online and becoming friends. Emphasis on anonymous Anonymously. The FMC in this book moved to this small town in, I believe it's in Canada, very snowy, very cold. She's not used to driving in those conditions. So even though he like doesn't like her from the start, he's like, I'll drive you. I'll pick you up. I'll do this. He's very much an acts of service MMC, which acts of service, when people do acts of service for me, that's the biggest way I feel loved. So I really, really enjoyed him. King of Country. I ended up reading this book in that video. It's funny because this is also about a country artist, like a country musician. The MMC in this book, his contract was up with his agency and he ended up going back to his small town, his hometown, on the farm that he grew up on to just get away because he's done with music. Like he really doesn't want to do it anymore. The FMC in this book works for the agency and she gets sent out there to convince him to re-sign with them because like he brought in big money and they're like, we want you back. But he keeps saying no, so she gets sent out there to like get the job done. They're just very annoyed with each other from the start, obviously, but she does end up staying on the ranch because like the nearest hotel from this like small town is like 45 minutes away. So, oh no. She ends up staying on the ranch in the bunkhouse. I think it's the bunkhouse with no AC. But guess who puts AC in it? Guess who like sneakily puts an AC unit to make sure she has air conditioning even though he's very annoyed with her and wants her to go home? What's his name? Kyle. Kyle does. I gave this book 3.5, 3.75 stars. Somewhere around there. Very fun read. I feel like if you're wanting to go the country boy, country artist route, I liked this one slightly better than this one. But both are good options. Thirst. Read this in this video. This is a literary fiction book. Queer literary fiction. Vampire-esque literary fiction. I love this book because it got straight to the point. I think I gave it four stars. At the moment in my brain, it's a four star read. I loved how short and sweet it was. And I also felt like the storyline was very engaging. It was sharing the life of this one vampire girl. Just like following her life. And then it ended up jumping to present day, this human girl, and then sharing how their lives intertwine. If you like vampires and lit fic, recommend. The book I DNF'd. Hear me out. I will be picking this book back up. I will be picking this book back up. I didn't DNF it because it was bad. I didn't DNF it because the writing was bad. I DNF'd it because it was right book, wrong time, and I had so many other books on my radar. I believe I mentioned I was reading this book when I was going camping. 
I think I was reading it around then. I got 50% into it and I just got distracted. I was reading The Ballad of Never After and A Curse for True Love around that time and then I just didn't pick it back up and honestly didn't want to pick it back up. This is a college romance, which normally isn't my style, if I'm being honest. I don't know, I feel like I'm so far removed from college nowadays, I don't really love reading about college students, but I actually was really enjoying it. I tried. It was just right book, wrong time. Love on the brain. I gave this book two and a half stars. The first 70% of it, loved. Me, me and Levi are getting married, actually. I loved Levi. But also he was your typical Allie Hazelwood MMC, and I, I just have a thing for her MMCs. They are just so obsessed and it's, it's lovely. This is a STEM romance and the ending of it was too cheesy for me in not the best way. I don't know how to explain it because I'm also gonna be talking about the blonde identity in a second, but this one was also really cheesy, but I liked it. This one was really cheesy and I wasn't vibing with it the last 30%. Sometimes cheesiness works for me, sometimes it doesn't. I just got really bored and after 70% I was just like, okay, I'm done. We can move on. So Let Them Burn by Camilla Cole. This is a Jamaican inspired fantasy book and I had an audible credit so I ended up bouncing back and forth between the audiobook and the physical only because I was kind of worried of what the world building would be like and I felt like listening to the audiobook would help me kind of grasp and understand the world building since this is the first book and what is to be a fantasy series. Listening to it, it was very easy to understand but also with this being YA, I think if you read it, it would be very easy to grasp as well. Nothing too crazy, nothing too difficult. Kind of your typical fantasy book, there's not really much I have to say about it other than I had fun reading it and I recommend it. It goes back and forth between following these two sisters. One of them has this like incredible immense power and was blessed by the gods and she's very young and immature throughout the beginning of the book but I feel like with her specifically we get to see so much character development with how she's going to be using those powers for good and not just childish immature things. So it follows her and it also follows her other sister, I can't remember their names, Farron and Alara. Farron was blessed by the gods. Alara ends up bonding with a dragon with like an enemy group of people. So she bonds with this dragon and she ends up having to go into kind of enemy territory because they can't say no to this bond. She has to go, she has to learn. And so Farron throughout the book is kind of trying to figure out how to either break this bond or get her sister back. And there's also a lot of different little subplots going on and issues within the world that this child with this incredible power is trying to solve and deal with. The Ballad Never After and A Curse for True Love. These were the last two books in the Once Upon a Broken Heart series this one, four stars. Best book in the series. You guys were right. It's so good. Incredible. This one, the fuck was this love triangle about? Made my eye twitch for real. Three and a half stars. I've talked about this series so much on this channel. Most of you know, but if you don't know and you're somehow new here, Stephanie Garber wrote a brand new fairy tale. The series isn't a fairy tale retelling. It's truly a unique and new fairy tale and I genuinely think she did a good job with it. I think there could have been a few things changed with this one to make it end better, but overall the uniqueness of this, the creativity that was thrown into the series, I thought it was very well done and I honestly think the series is going to be good for rereads. Like I think I'm going to end up rereading this sometime later this year or next year and it's going to be even better the second time around. This one iconic, this one all right. I will say this did end exactly the way I wanted it to end. Do with that information what you will. The last physical book that we have is The Blonde Identity, which I read in this video as well. Did I give this 3.75 or 4 stars? I don't know, but I loved it. I thought it was so fun. This was cheesy as hell, especially at the end, like a little bit too much at the end to where there was like a l probably a good chapter where I was like, okay, be so for real right now. Like the main characters literally said I love you after four days. And I was like, huh? but it's okay. But it was okay. That's what I meant to say. I was vibing with it. I think this is the perfect summer read. If you're gonna go to the beach this summer or you're just gonna be hanging out outside, it's just very giggly and fun. The FMC wakes up with amnesia, finds out her sister's a spy. There's people after her because it's her twin sister, so then people think she's her twin sister. So when she wakes up with amnesia and she's getting shot at and she sees this guy who's a male spy, she ends up like going off with him because he's protecting her, but then there's some fake dating in there, but then they fall in love, say I love you after four days, and you're like, what the f is going on? But I'm intrigued because this guy is killing people for her. 
And man, he really loves her. I don't know how he can really love her because it's been four days, but man, he really loves her. Moving on to the books that I either read through my library or I read them on Kindle Unlimited, just books that I don't own. The first being Vicious by V.E. Schwab, which I read through my library. And I read this one a little bit in this video, but I didn't touch on it too much. This was the highest rated book of the month. I gave it four and a half stars. And I honestly think I will reread this in the future and it will be even better the second time around and I will probably end up giving it five stars in the future. That's what happened with Ninth House and that's also what is happening with The Secret History right now. There are just some books that you read at first and you're like, okay, okay, I really vibe with this and then the second time around, boom. That also happened with Wait For It by Mariana Zapata. Gave it like four and a half stars at first, now it's like a six out of five star book for me. Anyways, Loved Vicious by V.E. Schwab. This was my first book by this author and I love it. I'm reading Vengeful, the second book in this series right now. And I plan to continue to read her books because they really are well written. Vicious specifically was urban fantasy, which I don't think I've ever read an urban fantasy book before, or it's been a very long time. The two main characters, Victor and Eli, I said this in that video, they just needed a kiss. There was no romance in this book. I didn't need there to be romance in this book. So that's not what I mean by saying this, but they were just so obsessed with each other, so obsessed with killing each other, so cutthroat with each other and just thinking about each other all day long. I was like, just kiss already. Like, good God, that would solve most of your problems. In this fantasy book, there are these people called Eos, Extraordinaries, and you become an Extraordinary and develop a specific power because each EO has a specific different power that they adopt. You become that by dying and kind of being resuscitated, coming back to life in a very specific way and in a very specific manner. Both Eli and Victor had become EOs because they had researched them for a long time. They wanted to become them. But Eli, when he became one, he like kind of figured out how bad they were. So he's out to kill all the EOs. And you're like, bro, you're literally an EO. And you're killing all these people because you don't think they're natural? Kind of weird. And then Victor gets framed for something at the beginning of the book. So he is kind of on a war path. He's out for revenge. So him and Eli... They're just, they're just beefing the entire time. Dust Storm. This is a small town cowboy romance. I really was on like a small town cowboy kick this month and I'm still on it and I will continue to read them throughout April. I think I gave this book three stars on Goodreads, but I think it's probably more like three and a half stars. It really was well done. I don't think a lot of people will vibe with the FMC in this book. There were so many people in the reviews about this book calling the FMC a bitch, but I think if you read it, you have to recognize that this FMC is just not a nurturing person. Whereas we see... A lot of women in books and I mean like a lot of women in person who already have this like this kind of almost motherly and very nurturing nature this FMC does not have that and I think a lot of people won't vibe with her because of that I liked her I really did and I respected her the MMC in this book was so obsessed with her he also went to therapy he was a widow so he put himself and his kids in therapy and then the FMC comes in she comes to this small town she comes to their farm because she's gonna be working for them and kind of trying to expand their business and she has to stay on site and so what do you know there's nowhere else to say except for the guest bedroom at his house with his children there and he's kind of obsessed with her from the start. The MMC of this book was just so emotionally intelligent. And some of the things coming out of his mouth, I was like, oh my god. Meant for Stone. I ended up giving this book three stars. It was just a giggly romance with no plot. There was no plot in it. If you want spice, no plot this one. There were moments in this book where I was like laughing my ass off and I was like, oh my god, oh my god, that was so cute. But overall, it was just okay. The Princess Trap. I listened to this audiobook this month. The first day I started my period, I was like, I literally can't function like a human being. Listen to the entire audiobook in one day, laying on my couch like a f corpse with the audiobook on 1.8 speed. Finish the entire thing. No plot. Just vibes. It was a three star book for me. Small Town Swoon by Melanie Harlow. Guys, this is also a no, no, pl no big plot, just vibes. Ah! I think I give this one 3.25, 3.5 stars. There was a lot of these books, but I went into them not knowing this information. You know, I went into all of these thinking there was gonna be like plots and then it was just no plot, just vibes, which is okay. This was the first book that I read this month. So I'm trying to like remember what it was about. It was second chance kind of because the girl I think like eight years prior had hit on this guy and tried to make a move and he was like, no, shut it down, shut it down. This ain't gonna work. And so she was kind of like 
almost embarrassed for being vulnerable like that in front of him and so she kind of had it out not had it out for him but just didn't like him for the next eight years and she just always avoided him when he would come back into town because he was a famous actor so she'd always be hearing his name but she was like oh my god I think she's probably just embarrassed which unfortunately I would have been too but I'm screaming while I'm reading this book I'm like don't be embarrassed girl like I'm proud of you for trying I really am but then I know myself in that position I would have been like oh god can we never think about this in that moment again manacled manacled's not a book it is a fan fiction on ao3 and i've been getting a lot of questions whether i recommend it or not after reading it because i didn't actually say if i recommended it or not and I, the answer is i don't know if i recommend it or not i honestly think that if i wasn't reading manacled in that video i probably would have dnf'd it because i'm trying to read for a good time i'm not trying to read books that are going to make me feel as emotional as that did it hurt and it just kept getting worse and worse and worse and you're like we can't go down from here yeah you can yeah you can you can go down from here this is a draco and hermione fan fiction it was so long but beautifully written and i just found out yesterday actually that the author of this book apparently wrote it on her phone while her newborn was taking naps which if you read it and like know that you're gonna be like whoa that's like the amount of detail that's put into it these fan fiction writers are just out of this world with their writing ability. I don't think I will ever read this again. <laughs> this was my one sad read for the year. I can't do any more than this because this was devastating. The last book that I read in the month of March was Leather and Lark, which doesn't come out till June, but I got an art copy of this. This is by Bren Weaver. This is a dark romantic comedy. You guys have probably heard me shout from the rooftops about how much I love Butcher and Blackbird. This is the second book and it follows Lark, the FMC in this book's best friend. And the MMC in Leather and Lark is Lachlan, which is the brother of the MMC in this book. I gave it 3.75 stars, maybe three and a half stars. It wasn't my favorite. I did have a lot of fun reading it, but I felt like it was missing something. I don't know if it was the character's connection missing something or if it was the connection that I felt to the book missing something. And I also don't know if I only love the characters because of seeing them in Butcher and Blackbird or if I actually love the characters because of this book. Like I'm reading it and I'm like, do I already love these guys because of the way this is written or because they are related or besties with the characters in this book. I don't know. Bren Weaver is one of my favorite authors. Still love Bren and had so much fun reading this. It just was missing something for me. And I think those are all the books that I read in the month of March. I'm actually going to start filming a 24 hour reading challenge tomorrow for you guys to have out next week. But I want to know if you want me to read 24 hours straight or if you want a 12 hour and 12 hour. I feel like most of you are out for me and you're gonna say read for 24 hours straight because you simply just love to see me suffer, which that's fine. I think I already know which one you're gonna pick, but I am gonna give you the option. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video and I will see y'all next week. Bye. Bye.